So before we start, I'd like to share with you the circle of success of a masterful engineer. Now what we like to do is to aim big. And what we do, we aim at these five important points. So the first one is a positive mindset. Number two is to attract customers to our Google reviews. Number three, we do a first rate job by following the masterful engineer ethics. Number four is to retain customers for repeat business. And number five is to gain referrals from those customers. So that's it. So on with the show. Hi guys, it's master coach Tony Morgan. And today's video is on a main Eco Elite HE30. So today's video is one of the classic ones where customers call us out and they find us from Google. And if you look on Google, you'll see that our Google reviews are going over a thousand now, nearly a thousand and forty and climbing every day. So what we do in this tin, as you can see here, works. We are masterful engineers. Anyway, back to the fault. So today's fault, we're not getting hot water. That's what the customer's complaint is. So this bar is quite a good one for us because we've got everything at hand. We've got a liquor wash on bait and bear to show you the hot water not working. So in fact, I'm going to turn it on now so you can see it live. So it's a tap running. We go to the boiler and no activation whatsoever. So it's all dead. But when we turn the heating on, it fires up no problem. So in this video, I'm not going to ask you a question like I normally do. In fact, this video, I'm going to dedicate it to one of my students, Marius Campellus, because he's done the Masterful Engineer program with myself. I took him through the ranks from absolutely nothing and built him up to be an extremely great engineer. And what he did, he showed me a tip himself how to change his parts in minimal time a lot quicker through the way he thinks. I showed him about logical thinking and how he took his own thinking to another level. The customer has also said they've got another complaint and what it was the pressure is going up. They keep putting the pressure up. Sorry, keep topping it up because the pressure is dropping down. This is happening on a regular basis. So we're going to look at the expansion vessel and see if that's flat. So we've got a hot water problem and a pressure loss problem. We've turned the power off, took the fuse out there. And then we're going to remove the two screws that one there and that one there and the front lift off you've probably seen this before on previous videos what we do as masterful engineers we always add the appliance details onto our system for future reference so we we know if we need parts in the future we've got the gc and serial number so um going back to marius when marius was doing his training this was a good few years ago now we've done a technique how to change the flow turbine which then was a bit long-winded but Marius has discovered a quicker technique which I'm going to show you on this video anyway we're going to turn off the cold water inlet it's on, underneath the boiler here you can see that's closed off and then we're going to open the hot tap to make sure it's off so we just do that and you can see it's off because it was running before. So you need this tool like this, you need a ratchet like this, and you need an 18 mil, as you can see there, you can see it, 18 mil. For that, that will fit on the floor turbine, lovely and snug. So to get access, what we're gonna do, you remove this clip and remove this here, this is the actuator. Once that's done, we can get inside here with our ratchet. The other thing now we need to do is remove this whole effect sensor off the top of the flow turbine. 
then we can get our ratchet on there. I'll just put that to one side and then we can get our tool on it now. So, oh, yeah, go in there, but there's something actually on this main, we've got this extra component. What's stopping it? Which is this here. That's that pipe work there. So on the main, it's a bit different to the Potterton. It doesn't quite work the same. So we might have to resort back to the old fashioned method. Right, so what we're going to do, we're going to go to plan B. We can't do the one what we're about to show you. So what we're going to do, we're going to have to move this pipe out of the way so I can get my grips through this angle and it will involve undoing this connection as well and removing this pipe. Just to recap, the technique what to show you and the Morris technique cannot be done on the ERP version because of this pipe here what gets in the way so the ERP version doesn't work that's the main one the ERP Positon possibly can work because it's got a different design and it's called this heat exchanger so the Potterton doesn't have this heat exchanger, so it's just the mains, what we're talking about in this particular context. As you can see, I've re completely removed the gas valve because even the pipe didn't help because it wasn't high enough to get onto here. So the gas valve was in the way, so that's been removed. So now we've got access to the top of the floor turbine. Right, the job's escalated into, it's going to be a replacement of this block now because if you look more closely, it's kind of bent. If you look how close it's, you can see it's tilted. I tried adjustables, I tried big grips, it's just not moving, but you can see how the angle of that floor turbine's gone. That's why it's not going to come out. So it's going to mean the placement of the whole block. So this is what happens on the job. Live, you've seen it for yourself. The parts we're going to have to take out now is going to be the pump. We're going to have to disconnect this connection here. The plate heat exchanger. And we've got connections on the bottom. You can see them there actually. You have to undo these two connections as well. So it's going to be a bit of an involved job for us to do. This is the part what we're going to be fitting. We've closed off the isolation valves at the floor and returned and we've repressurized the expansion vessel because the customer said it was losing pressure and also it helps us remove any trapped water within the boiler. We've got the pump off now you can see, there it is. That's where it was. So you can see now the floor turbine, how bent it is. And that's why we're changing this housing. Now that's the other one out. So what we're going to do, we have to take off the PRV and the drain off point and put it back on the new one. I've took the plate heat exchanger completely out because I'm going to be changing the lip seals which are two behind here and obviously on the new one I'll be replacing well putting new lip, new lip seals in that as well I'd also like to point out this job has escalated to a big job as you could see and the time it kind of happened it was around about 4 o'clock so I had a decision to make could go back the next day and leave them out heating hot water or could carry on and do it and that's what I've decided to do to carry on and do it because I can get this customer's heating and hot water on today 
And this is what we do as masterful engineers. We don't give in despite what challenges we have in front of us. There's my new one ready to go back or prepared. And let's just look at the boiler here. I've put new washers on there, so I'll make sure you change them as well. Put silicon on them, o rings. And it's ready to go back. Now, obviously, you've not seen the sort of nitty gritty undoing nuts, etc. techniques on that. But if you want to learn more how to do all this, you can subscribe on my offline and online bar repair accelerate training. So you can find more about that, click on the link below and you can do hands-on training and really you can get involved and I'll show you the detail of this but you're just, just going to see the overview of what's getting done on this boiler. We've got the plate heat exchanger back in position, all the connections back on, these are tightened up now and then we're just going to put the pump back put the screws back and then we're nearly there the pressure is back up now so you can see it's full of pressure and the cold inlet's on, hot's on so no leaks there so you get that side of it sorted out first and then I'm going to put the gas valve back the gas valve's now back as you can see and the gas pipe is also connected we just got to put this electrical, electrical connection on now. Let's put that on there. Put the screw in there. The earth cables on there. And we're now nearly ready to roll. You can see the actuator motor is also back. I just want to tell you something about this PRV. If you look carefully, you can see on the the black bit, the hexagon shape. Well, there's two types of PRVs on these boilers. So it's this type, and then there's a smaller one with a smaller head, and it doesn't have that hexagon black bit. So when you get a PRV for a main or backsy, be very careful not to get the wrong one. What I do, I take a picture of the PRV and compare it when you go to the supplier. I've sprayed my leak detection spray on this and this is looking nice, so that's all good. We've now got the boiler on, you can see it's on heating. We run it on heating first to get rid of any air trapped inside the boiler. And then we'll do the big test and run the hot water and see if that works. We now run the hot water, bit of any air in that pipe. And then let's look at the boiler here. So yep, you can see the lights on for hot water tap is on. It's running and it's all good. So it was what I said it was. Though it was a big job to actually do the job, you can see how something can escalate in the real world. But you see now we'll overcome the challenges to do it and we got there in the end I've just checked that joint there at the top of the gas valve and we check that one there that's good so no leaks on the gas okay so this is gonna be the end of this video hopefully you learnt something you enjoyed looking at what I've done on this particular hot water fault now, if you are a new engineer or an installer wanting to get into bar repair and you're looking for training, just click on the link below and you can find out about my classroom training, what I do, and my online training, what I do. So, if this is for you, you know what to do. So, that's it from me and I'll see you in the next video. Bye for now.